Hey folks, how's it going? We're going to go real quick through three of the uh, most common aggregate functions in SQL. We're going to be looking at min, max, and average because they all go together. And don't worry, I'm actually going to make the code a lot bigger and easier to see, especially if you're on your phone. I just wanted to go through real quick and show if you stay till the end all the things that you'll see. I'm going to show you how to do the um, aggregate functions by themselves. I'm going to show how to do it with a group by, that's here and here. And then lastly, I'm going to show you analytical functions, how to, or what people call sometimes window functions, with over and partition by. So there's a lot that we have to go through. So to start, let me move this thing up here a little bit, and let me, one, two, three, four, five, there. That should make it a little easier to see. The first thing I'm going to do is select from this table, okay? It's a real typical employee table. You got the name, you got the department, you got the salary. Okay, well, how does this work? Okay, if I was to do the max salary without a where clause, what's going to happen is it's just going to show me the biggest salary in the table. 898000 How would you like to make $898,000 a year? Well... Better start learning how to code in SQL. <laughs> and if you already know, you got to learn more, okay? Uh, the min function, this is going to be really depressing. It shows the lowest salary in the table, 18000 Hopefully you're making more than that, okay? And then last but not least, there's the average. And this is real world, so the average, you notice, is not halfway between the min and the max. And in most companies, that's true too, okay? So that's how these work by themselves, without a where clause, you know, they, uh, they just basically look at the whole table. Well, now what I want to do is I want to show you how to do a group by. Okay, now a group by is different. These are three different group bys. I'm going to show you one at a time. What this does is I'm going to say, um, look at the end here. It says group by department. Okay, what that means is I'm going to be showing the department, which is just a field, not an aggregate function, and then the salary the max salary. So it's going to show me the biggest salary in every department, and it's only going to show one line for each department. So boom. Advertising, the biggest hitter makes 32,000. Cafeteria, 46. HR, 81. And it goes all the way to, hey, software, a quarter million. Woohoo! So anyway, um, that's how that works. Now the min does the same exact thing, except it's the lowest salary. This is going to be super depressing. Yeah, just look at those pitiful numbers. But look, software... They still make over 100000 Everybody there makes six figures. Yee and then average works the same way. Every department, one time, and then there's the average figure. Now, you notice that that doesn't look like a dollar amount because it goes dot four two da 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 you'd, you'd have to format that, but we're not really going to spend any time doing that because we figure you know how to do that. Now, if you wanted to, you could do a group by and show more than one aggregate function in the same thing. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking all three of these queries and I'm rolling them into one. I just indented it differently for readability, okay? Because otherwise it would have went off the screen and I'd be, you know, scrolling back and forth. Forget that. So I'm just going to hit that. And then it shows everything together. Now, you can probably see why group by could help you make a really cool report, you know, because... Without doing any heavy lifting, you're like, here's the max, here's the min, here's the average, have a nice day. Okay, that's all well and good. But in the real world, if you're going to go to a job, I don't mean like, you know, an interview for a full stack job, but if you actually go for a SQL job, meaning you're going to be using SQL Server most of the time, you know, like maybe it's, you know, for data warehousing or what have you, but you know, or reporting or you know, whatever, whether it's, you know, SSRS or SSIS or whatever it is, you have to learn analytical functions. An analytical function is basically an aggregate function like max, hello, or min, or average, along with the over word and then something like partition by, okay? Um, the reason you have to know these is they have a lot of firepower when it comes to functionality without writing a lot of code. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, this code is going to look very strange to you, and it probably gives you a headache to see it, probably even more than my voice does. Well, that's probably even. But anyway, what this is going to do is it's going to do some really amazing stuff. Uh, are you familiar with the concept in returning stuff like a running total? 
That's actually every time you look at your bank statement or a credit card statement, it has a running total. You know, it has a starting balance, and then every time you have a credit or a debit, it changes the amount. So, you know, everything affects the row before after it. Let me show you what this looks like before I talk you to death, okay? Okay. You notice it says partition by department in all three of these. Uh, that's returning a field called max sal. That's returning a field called min sal. And of course, this is turn, returning one called av sal. See? Max sal, min sal, av sal. Real creative names I came up with, I know. The reason they're also called window functions is because think of this as a building, and believe it or not, think of this as a window. I'm going to go through this really quickly. What it does is it organizes the information. I'm going to move this up. It organizes the information, in this case, by department. It partitions it by department because you asked it to. So here are all the salaries for this department um, for advertising. They're not in uh, numeric order. They're, they're in name order because it says order by amp. This is amp. So we've got 18,032, 27, and 32. But what this does is it doesn't give you the max for the whole department. It only starts with the first record, and it looks at the first record. Well, that's 18,000. So the max is 18, and the min is 18, and the average is 18. But remember, it's a running max, and it's a running min, and a running average. So that means when you get to the second record, now it has to look at two records for that department, 18,000 and 32,000. Well, duh, 32 is the higher, and 18 is the lower. And if you add them together, you get 50,000 divided by 2, so it averages to 25. Easy peasy. When we get to the third record, now 32 is still the max, and 18 is the min. But now the average is this funky number, because it's these three numbers that don't divide by 3 too politely. Okay? Great. Interesting, and the same thing happens at the last row. Nothing else is really changing. I mean, the average is changing a little bit, uh, but the max is still 32 and the min is still 18. Great. When you get to cafeteria, the odometer starts over. For example, the first record is 31,000, so the max and the min and the add, everything is 31,000. But when you get to the second record, now it's 23. Well, 31 is still the max, but now 23 is the min. And when we average these together, of course, we get 27. And we come all the way down to this last one and see, you know, every time you add another record, it has to take into account everything in that department, that, in the current record and the one that came before it. Now, we get to HR, same thing, it starts over again. 81,000, it's going to say 81,000 everywhere. Now 76,000, so 81 is the high, 76 is the low, and it splits the difference for the average. And it goes on like that forever and ever, you know. So basically, that's how that works. It's that simple. But here's what's not simple. If you go on an interview for SQL Server specifically, they're going to ask you about analytical queries. They may give you an example, and you may either have to write pseudocode or you might actually have to, I've never had heard of anybody sitting at a keyboard and writing the query. That would really be the best way to do it. Um, or they may just ask you to explain it. How would you do this? How would you do that? And you can't really trick your way or con your way through something like this. Either you know it or you don't. The good news is, you know, max and min and average may not excite you as much as other analytical functions like rank, dense rank, row number, but they all work the same way. So if you can do what I just showed you with max, min, and average, you can do it with all of them. You could do it with QMDist, you could do it with lag, you could do it with lead, you could do it with the whole thing. It's good to play around with them and be familiar with them, because if you really want to get a coding job, you need to know this. If they don't ask you these questions at the place that you're going to work, then trust me, you'll probably get the job, but you'll be wasting your time because you're not going to learn anything when you're there. So anyway, that's my two cents. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, please hit the like button, subscribe, da 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 There will be more videos coming out. I try to put a bunch of videos out every week, and hopefully you guys like them. In the meantime, practice, practice, practice. Go on interviews, you know, remotely. Even if you fail, you'll know what you need to work on for next time. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.